Lucy, it's going to be fun tonight. Welcome to Big Life Mentoring. I am your proud head mama, Pamela Krim. Oh, those who are watching online, what a treat we have for you tonight. Um, this is not my studio. We are live in Tulsa, Oklahoma with some amazing girls. Woo. We've been having fun. And I am worn the heck out. You girls are awesome. We've been having a good time. But it's Monday night, and I couldn't pass up the opportunity to do live mentoring while I'm here with you girls. So I hope you don't mind being my guinea pigs and being a live audience for tonight. I might pull a few of you out of the audience. Those of you watching live might get to meet a few girls. It'll be exciting and fun. But all this month of mentoring, we've been doing our greatest hits. Have y'all been having fun? Those of you who are in mentoring. Let me see your hand if you are in mentoring or have recently been part of it. Awesome. So you're not missing the session tonight. Look at you having fun and being in the session. So we've been doing our greatest hits all month long, and it just so happens that tonight I get to do our greatest hit of all time. This is the one that was most popular in our survey, the one that most people wanted to hear again, and it's on happiness. I can teach on that. Yeah, I can get all over that. We're talking about intentional happiness, okay? Not just happy, but like intentional happiness. Because here's what I believe. You can go through life intentionally happy or unintentionally miserable. Because life has this grind to it that naturally pulls you to misery, doesn't it? If you don't fight to stay happy, life will wear you out. And so I really want to talk about being intentionally happy. No one wakes up of a morning and says, I am going to have myself a miserable day. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be miserable and I'm going to make everybody else miserable too. I'm going to be in a bad mood today. Nobody wakes up with the intention of being in a bad mood, do they? But has anybody in this room ever woke up in a bad mood? Has it ruined your day? Yes. Has it ruined the day of those around you? Yes. Yeah. And you know what? Life pulls us in that direction. It's natural. So we have to decide, we have to make a pact that we're going to be intentionally happy. I've never once had a person come up to me and say, you know, Pamela, I just want to intentionally be miserable in my life. I just want to be miserable. I've never had anybody say that to me, but I have had a lot of people come up to me or message me and say, I am exhausted. I am worn out. I am frazzled. I am really unhappy, and I don't know how to get my happy back. And Pamela, I'm at this point in my life that I'm just thinking, is it worth it? Like, really, is it worth it to continue living this? Oh, I've talked many people away from that pill bottle before. One of our dear, dear ladies who has been part of this club for many years, who's been part of mentoring since day one, who's not here tonight, when she was supposed to come to her very first retreat, she didn't show up the first night. And I didn't even miss her because I'd never met her before. There were a ton of ladies there. And at the end of the first night, I realized her name tag was still laying on the table. And I thought, wow, where'd she go? Like, she bought a ticket. Where was she at? The next day, she came and she showed up late. She sat in the back of the room. She connected with just a few people. She left early from the retreat. And when she hugged me goodbye, she said, I think I finally found a place where I fit in. And I thought, wow, you know, there's, there's some pain going on there. And I didn't know what it was. She messaged me that night and told me the reason why she wasn't at the retreat on the opening night was because she was at home <coughs> hooking a garden hose to her car exhaust. Because she was so unhappy unhappy with life. How does life get there? How does that happen? 
And how do you fix it? And okay, this isn't only for the girls who are extremely unhappy, wondering how am I just gonna wake up to another day of life? But this is just as much for the girls who are kind of trapped in that boring life. That are trapped in the life that it takes a day where the weather is perfect, where the kids are behaving perfectly, where you're on vacation to be happy. Ah, that's not the way life should be. It shouldn't take a vacation day to be radically happy. I'm here to tell you, you can be crazy, over-the-top happy 99% of the days of your life, regardless of what's going on. What gets us to that point of just boredom with life or to that point of hooking a garden hose to the exhaust of our car? It's because we're not intentional about our happiness. We let that grind of life wear us out. Can we fix it? Well, I'm here to tell you tonight, we can't fix it. I can't fix it. But you can. You're the only one that can fix your happiness. And tonight I'm going to share with you five steps of intentional happiness, and they apply to you regardless of where you are. Who here considers themselves a really happy person? Who here would consider themselves one of the happiest people in the room? Okay, I know I'm up here. I'll compete. It's all right. No. I got you. No, no, no. <laughs> it's cool. Like, I want you to be the happiest person in the room. Seriously. Now, let me see your hand if you think, man, I'd like to be a little bit happier. It's perfectly okay to be really happy and want to to be happier. In fact, there's something wrong if you don't want to be happier. God's not sitting looking down at you saying, oh, no, 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 Katina, you're already happy. <laughs> don't be so greedy, you know? Don't want to be happier. No. What about her? She's not as happy as you. Give a little bit to her too. No, God's saying, I have got enough happiness to cover every single one of you. I want you to be happy, happy, happy. Do you know that I talk in my sleep and I often say happy, happy, happy in my sleep? I really do. You can ask Laura Mitchell, who I sleep with at retreats. I really do. So let me ask you this. Would you be happier if you lived on the beach? It's okay. Don't say what you think I want to hear. Would you be happier if you lived on the beach? I lived on the beach for 365 days and it was freaking awesome. Would you be happier if you lived on the beach? Would you be happier if your butt was smaller? It's okay. It's all right. Yeah. Tell me. Would you be happier? Would you be happier if you were healthier, if you felt better? Yeah. All right. Would you be happier if your husband got his crap together? Yes. My husband has his crap together. I'm already a happy girl. Would you be happier if maybe your kids weren't messy little beasts? Yes. Would you be happier if your kids were in school right now? You know, I believe it's summertime that we realize why some animals eat their young. <laughs> yeah, that's why we're doing Big Life on Tour. We need to get out of the house. Would you be happier if some things were different in your life? It's perfectly okay to say yes. Because the truth is, maybe you would be. But here's the takeaway, what I want you to remember from this. Experts believe that yes, your circumstances are tied to your happiness, but only an itty bitty 10%, 10%. And that is why you lose the weight and you have a smaller butt, or your husband gets his crap together, or you get the divorce that you've been wanting for so very long, or your house gets organized, or your financial problems are fixed and you have some success and you finally, finally get there, then you're only 10% happier. Then you're like, crap, I thought this was going to make me happy. And you get like this little surge of happiness, like, woohoo, yeah. And then you're 10% happier. And then you're in a really dangerous place. Let me tell you about that dangerous place. It's when you realize that that didn't fix your life. 
And then you're no longer 10% happier, but you're about 30% more miserable because then you lose your hope. I want to share with you the five steps to intentional happiness. Who needs them? Who wants happier in their life? I think we all do. Number one is pretty simple. Take responsibility. You kind of knew I was saying it. If you know me, you probably knew that was coming, right? You take responsibility. Who's responsible for your happiness? Okay, we all know to say that, but here's what I want to know tonight. Do you live that? Really, do you live that? Let me take it on a real personal level and come into your house right now. Do you allow your husband's mood or your children's behavior to affect your happiness? But whose responsibility is it? It's yours. But we're giving it away, aren't we? We're not taking responsibility because if he's in a bad mood, then darn it, we're in a bad mood. If the kids aren't acting right, then we're not happy, are we? How extremely unfortunate it is that there are so many kids growing up in this world who feel responsible for their parents' happiness. Really, that's really sad. And it is this really heavy burden that we lay on them, but also a power trip that we're giving our kids by saying that, hey, if you're not happy, mama's not going to be happy either. Let me tell you, I was raised in a house that I knew my teenage fits and moods and little temper tantrums were not going to shake my parents. In fact, they would laugh harder. They would go have more fun when I was in a mood. And it snapped me out of it like that because they didn't play the game. Are you playing the game at your house? And let me tell you something. I'm not standing here on stage being perfect. My kids are here tonight. <laughs> they will correct me real quick. I fall into it too. I am just as guilty of counting on my kids to make me happy. How many of us live vicariously through our kids? Man, we're proud of our kids. But is that their job to make us happy? Or is that our responsibility? Is it our husband's job to make us happy? Or is that your responsibility when you wake up every morning? I have a script for you. How many of you have teenagers? How many of you have teenagers with an attitude? <laughs> Love my kids. They're awesome. <laughs> How many of you have kids that aren't even teenagers yet and they still have an attitude? <laughs> All right. Just wait. It's going to get better. Not. <laughs> I have a script for you to use, all right? Are you ready for this? Here's your script to use with your kids. When they're acting like that, when they got that mood going on, and you want to preserve your happiness because you want to live an example to them to show I'm responsible for my happiness, and you want to show them that they're responsible for their own happiness. Here's the script. When you stop acting like a jack wagon, I'll be outside enjoying life, and you can go join me when you're ready. Like, seriously. Why would you sit in there and be miserable with them? Get outside and enjoy life, and you tell them, I would love to enjoy life with you today, but I'm not going to take part in whatever this is going on, okay? I'm here to talk when you're ready to talk, but your attitude is not going to affect my happiness. You're taking the power trip away from them, and you're teaching them the valuable lesson that we're all still trying to really learn in that we are responsible for our own happiness. Say that with me. Who's responsible for your happiness? Me. You are. Your husband, your kids, your boss, your neighbor. You are responsible for your own happiness. Little life says my circumstances determine my happiness. But big life says, nah, nah. I am responsible for my happiness. It's me. Number two, so we have number one, take responsibility. Number two, oh, special for you girls tonight. Get your panties out of a wad. Like, I am serious. It's really hard to be happy when you got your panties all up here, like, then you can't even walk straight. Because you know what? <laughs> you're offended. Somebody offended you, and you're angry, and you got your panties all twisted up there sideways. <laughs> She offended me. 
there is a horrible epidemic happening in this world today of easily offended people. Do you notice that? Go on Facebook. Someone is always offended by somebody else. And then you know what they do? They talk about it and point it out how they're offended by somebody. And Lonnie and I call these people the uh-oh squad. <laughs> uh-oh, you didn't mow the lawn this week. <laughs> uh-oh, you didn't take out the trash, did you? Uh-oh, they didn't turn on their blinker. Uh-oh, you gained a little bit of weight. Uh-oh, they did something to offend me. Uh-oh, that music was inappropriate tonight, Pamela. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Let me tell you something. I never, ever, ever, ever intend to offend anybody. But I offend a lot of people. I hear from leaders of the uh-oh squad on a regular basis. <laughs> uh-oh, Pamela. Oh, that was not good of you. You shouldn't say holy balls, Pamela. <laughs> okay, well, I'm trademarking that. Okay, so now you can't say it. <laughs> but the uh-oh squad, let me tell you something. It's really hard to be radically happy when you're easily offended. We got to stop being so easily offended. Happy people are not part of that uh-oh squad pointing out what everybody is doing wrong and what possibly could go wrong. They're not happy. I just want to throw this out there for our married ladies. Who's married? A lot of you are married. And you called yourself virgins earlier. <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever. I knew it wasn't true. All right. Or the hose in the room. Yeah. Let me just ask you this question. Just let it marinate, okay? Would you want to be married to you? Maybe yes, and if yes, awesome. But maybe you're a little too easily offended by him. You know, who, who wants to be married to someone who's so easily offended? Or who is the uh-oh squad leader of their house? Of the constant, uh-oh, <laughs> you didn't do that right. Have you ever called your husband a jack wagon? Don't do that. No, you don't want to go there. Here's what I'm inviting you to do. The uh-oh squad, how about you just cross that out and realize that you are part of the best cheerleading squad I have ever witnessed in my life. You don't want to be part of the uh-oh squad. You're part of this right here, this group of cheerleaders that you should be proud to be part of. How about instead of being part of the easily offended club, you just mark that out and you recognize you're part of the Smoking Hot Mama Club. All right, we don't play that game. We're not gonna be easily offended. We're gonna turn our cheek and we're gonna look away. We're gonna resist the temptation to be offended because someone didn't say hi to us. Someone in this room may get their feelings hurt tonight. They may be a little bit offended. And here's what I'm inviting you to do. Resist the urge. Everybody here loves you. We all want you to be here. Every single one of you. Resist that temptation that's so deeply seated in all of us of being offended. Don't get your panties in a wad. It's so hard to be happy when your panties are all in a wad about something. Number three. Oh, my hardest one. Be here. Like as in here, fully, in the very moment, wherever you are, be there. This one is radically hard for me because I'm a recovering multitasker extraordinaire, okay? Oh, I'm good at it. Like, I'm really good at it. But I'm recovering. And I'm learning to truly be here in the moment with one thing. And you know what? The better I get at that, the happier I find I truly am. But I don't know if anybody else is like me. Asking me to sit still and meditate for an hour is like asking me to cut off my right arm with a butter knife. It's painful for me because I would rather be doing 10 things all at once. 
Is anybody else like that? You know, if you've got some stuff to do, you might as well do it all at once. You're Facebooking on the toilet. Darn it, don't do that. Don't do that. Who does it? Confess it right now. Have you ever messaged me on the toilet? I have you. All right, you just know it now. I've sent you mentoring texts while I'm on the toilet. I'm recovering, okay? I'm a work in progress. Because you see, I bought into this fallacy that multitasking was the sign of a successful woman. I believed that. But you know what I learned? Here's the truth about multitasking. Multitasking is the sign of a woman who is doing a whole lot of stuff and she's doing none of it really well. Multitasking is a sign of a woman who's not really here because she's here and here and here and here. Lonnie is the one who told me, Pamela, you've got to stop that crap. You've got to be here. Do one thing at a time. And I fought him and I fought him and I fought him for years. Yes? <laughs> He's so humble. <laughs> but man, once I finally bought into that and really started, and again, I'm a work in progress here. But doing one thing at a time. Let me see the hands of the multitaskers again. Stop that crap. Yeah, you just stop that. Seriously, just try doing one thing at a time and see how much more successful you are, how much happier you really are. Girls, I want to speak to your heart tonight and tell you something. Our kids are growing up while we're on Facebook, reading about everybody else's kids. Our kids are growing up. Are we going to let that happen? Because we're multitasking queens? It's not working in your favor. Your kids say, look, Mom. And you say, yeah, just a minute. Who's guilty? Just a minute. Just a, just a minute. Right, I'll look in just a minute. But you know what? After enough times, our kids are going to stop saying look. They're just going to stop. Because they know we're not going to look. How about we be here fully. How about we just practice that right now? Just be here. Those of you watching at home, be here. Soak in this moment because let me tell you, you won't get it back. One shot. You will be so much happier if you get into the habit of being here. When your kids say, look, Look, be there. Please, I'm begging you, do not miss your own kids growing up because you're watching mine grow up on Facebook. It's not worth it. My kids are awesome, but your kids are awesome. Watch your kids grow up, not mine. Be there. Number four in our five steps of happiness, be active. Experts tell us, that physically active people are 85% likelier to be happy. But you don't need the experts to tell you that because let's look at your own life. Think back to a time in your life when you were really, really happy. And I'm not talking about when something big or magical was happening, the baby was being born, you were getting married, whatever. All right? I'm talking about just normal times when you were really happy in your life. Were you physically active then? I sure was. Now let's think about the opposite. Think about a time in your life when you were in a rut. Man, when you just didn't feel good. You were really unhappy. Were you being extra lazy during those times? Were you laying in bed, not getting up early, not being active? Could they be tied in some way? Think about right now in your life. Are you generally happy in your life or unhappy in your life right now? Now think about your physical activities. Are you active or unactive in your life? Could it be related? The objective of your life is not to sleep. It's to wake up and live. Some of us got that all backwards. All we want is to go home and take a nap and have a good night's rest. We are worn out. Our objective of life is to sleep, and we have got it wrong, girls. It is time that we wake up and we live. Stop craving so much sleep. 
The more you sleep, the more you will crave sleep. Do you know that's true? You felt it, right? You've laid around all day and you've slept an entire day and what did you crave more of? Sleep. You were exhausted, weren't you? And you slept all day. How is that possible? Pajama days are meant to be a treat, not a trend. If you spend even one day a week in your pajamas lounging around, I just want to step on your toes, maybe offend you, get your panties out of the wad, and just tell you it's too much. Even one day a week. Because do you realize one day a week spent in your pajamas, God bless you. Woo! That's powerful. Your hair even moved. <laughs> and they got that on camera. That was good stuff right there. <laughs> Told you you'd get to hear from somebody tonight. <laughs> but did you know that if you spend one day a week in your pajamas, it will add up to 11 years of your life over your lifetime? If you live an average lifetime, 11 years in your pajamas? Do you want to get to the end of your life and hear God say to you, girl, I had some good stuff planned for you. I really did. Man, I had some good stuff. But those were your pajama days. You know, if, if you would have just gotten out that day, just stepped out a little bit, if you would have gotten out, I had some awesome things for you, but it was your choice, and you chose pajama day. Man, I don't want to get to the end of my life and find that out. I'm not going to risk it, and I hope that you won't either. But I know that we have these excuses for why we can't be active. And the reason why I know about these excuses is because, girls, I've used them. The excuses of, I don't have time. Who's ever thrown that one out? I don't have time to be so active. I don't have time, Pamela. Well, can I just throw the BS flag? I mean, seriously? I think we do have time. Let me tell you about a lady. I call her Grandma Bonnie, my grandma. She was a single working mom of three girls two years apart in age. Three girls, single mom, worked full time. She raised all her own crops. They, she handmade all of their clothes, bought the fabric, made their clothes, washed it on a washboard, hung it on a line. Do you do that? No, we don't do that, do we? She would go to work, come home, break a chicken's neck, pluck the chicken, cook the chicken, milk the cow so they would have milk the next morning. You think she had a lot of work to do? Do you work that much? Like seriously, are our demands that much? I don't think so. Like really, can't we go to the grocery store and buy the chicken that somebody else fed, killed, plucked for us and throw it in the oven? I mean, can't we do that? But we opt for fast food because we don't have time, right? Can't we throw the clothes that we bought at the mall into our washing machine and punch a few buttons? I mean, really? We don't have time? I think we do have time. I think we've just gotten soft. And we all have. We're all guilty of it. We do have time, ladies. We've just fallen into a little trap. And here's the other excuse we use, my personal favorite. I hear it all the time. But Pamela, I cannot be physically active because I do not have enough energy. The energy gods blessed some and not the others. And I was not blessed with energy. You see, you have energy and I don't. But here's the truth about energy. You can use your energy being active and feel good about yourself, or you can use your energy being pitiful and miserable and lay around all day. And either way, you're going to go to bed at the end of the day exhausted. And ladies, every day we get to choose our own tired. We get to choose because you're going to be tired. And you get to choose which tired you go to bed with. There's a little secret to energy. If you use every ounce of energy you have today, in the morning, you're going to wake up with a little bit more than you had today. It's a use it or lose it kind of thing. You use it, you'll get more and more and more and more. That's how people go run 20 miles. They don't wake up one morning and go run 20 miles. They woke up one morning and went out and walked a mile. 
And then they did two, and then they did three, and they kept building and building and building. They didn't have energy to run 20 miles in the beginning, but guess what? They used every ounce of energy they had, and the next day they had a little more, and the next day they had a little more. But if we don't use our energy, the next day we wake up with less, and a little less, and a little less. So do you feel a little low on energy? If you do, it might just be because you haven't been using all the energy you wake up with every morning. Just try me and see if it's true. Use every ounce of it, and then more will be given to you. You know that scripture, be faithful a little, then more will be given? Could it apply to energy? Boy, I think it could. Number five, the absolute best. Gratitude. Be grateful. I need three volunteers. Oh, I love it when you just throw your hands up. I saw you, you, and you. All right. Come on. Lisa, Katina, and Lori, grab a box. All right. We're going to play a little game. Who has number one? Okay, number one, you come over here first. I am going to describe you, and you're going to act exactly as I describe you. Okay. okay? Okay. Number two, you're going to do the same when it's your turn, and number three, it's going to do the same. You, it's, you are going to do the same when it's your turn, okay? To really illustrate gratitude on a totally different level and help you be happier than maybe you've ever been before, I want you to imagine that the three of these girls is their birthday. It's your birthday. <laughs> Hold on. No acting yet. No, she's not acting. Yes, yeah, she wasn't acting. She's like, holy balls, it's my birthday. Okay. It is their birthday. And you have come to their birthday party. And it is time for them to open their birthday presents. Okay, little girl number one, listen to me and act exactly as I tell you. Little girl number one here, she's not happy. All right. She's going to open her present. Go ahead and open your present. And you know what? She's not happy about this because she already has one of these. <laughs> God, that's perfect. I mean, could that be? Perfect? Okay, that's awesome. Okay. She already has one. This isn't what she wanted. It's not good enough. And she is mad about it. How dare the giver of this gift give her something that she clearly already has? All right? So you just keep being mad. You're perfect. Thank you, little butt, you little brat. <laughs> Birthday girl number two. Now you act exactly as I tell you to. Okay. She's kind of bored by the whole thing. She's already got all the presents. All right? Open your present and just be bored by it. Okay, all right, like, geez, okay, well, thanks. All right, you know, whatever. You're just kind of indifferent to the whole thing. You're bored, yawn. I got this present, but I'm kind of bored. You know, thanks, but, you know, whatever. It's not going to make my day. When's this whole thing going to be over with? Good job. And here's birthday girl number three. Thank you, Lord, for setting this up so perfectly. Let's come in here so we're on film real quick. Okay. God really set this up so perfect for us. Okay. Birthday girl number three. It, okay. It's time to act. Act. Okay. <laughs> birthday girl number three is so happy it's her birthday. Okay. She's just so glad that somebody gave her a present. Oh my like, God. she's just thrilled. She peed. She peed. <laughs> Birthday girl is peeing her I pants. Got <laughs> I got a second one for you. Not number one, sorry. I've got my numbers mixed up. Birthday girl number three. She is so happy. And she's going to say, I love it. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. Mm -hmm. 
No. I love it! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! I love it! And she hasn't even opened her box yet. She doesn't even know what we've given her, and she's so overjoyed with it. Can I post it on Facebook? Yes, you may. She's going to post it. All right, this one's bored. This one's mad as heck. This one's just happy, happy, happy all the time right here. All right? So let me ask you something. Birthday girl, which one are you? <laughs> really, which one are you? And you're saying to me, but Pamela, it's not my birthday. Oh, but wait, 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 wait. You received a gift today, and it was wrapped in the rising sun. The best gift ever given to you today, a new day of life and I want to know how did you welcome this gift were you grateful were you number three that's like God thank you for this new day of life I love it thank you thank you thank you before you even knew what this day was going to hold did you wake up being thankful for it or were you like old birthday girl number one over here who was mad as heck that the giver of this day of life gave you a Monday. <laughs> you know, like really, I've already had a Monday and I didn't want another Monday, so I'm <laughs> mad because it's too early and I don't want to wake up. Like seriously, God, why do you make the sunrise at 6 a.m.? It's too early, okay? And you're mad about it. And you woke up this morning in a bad mood that you had been given a gift of another day of life. Like, seriously? <laughs> so good. Or here's where most of us are. We're just kind of indifferent. It doesn't matter that we're given this gift. We are bored and yawning. We wake up and we say, Oh, thanks. You know, God, glad to be alive today, but it's just another day, okay? I've had these before. I know what it's going to mean, and I'm just pretty darn bored by it all. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> you girls were awesome. Thank you so much. You have a seat. And you can keep your gifts, even though you don't deserve it. No. <laughs> oh, she didn't even open her gift, but she really loves it. It's the same as them. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I want to know, which one are you? Ungrateful, indifferent, or grateful? Because we all fall in one of those three categories. And each one of us were one of those birthday girls this morning. We received a gift, a gift, a beautiful gift. And how did you receive it? If you want to take your happy level up here, let me tell you, number three is where it's at. Thank you. I love it. Before you know what the day holds, before you know, truly grateful girls are number three. That's where it's all at. I've had the honor of watching two little girls who are extremely grateful for the past seven years. You met them tonight, my girls. We met them in an orphanage when they were three and four years old in Mexico. And I remember their first Christmas there at the orphanage. Lonnie and I went to go see them. They did not know that we were trying to adopt them and we took them Christmas presents. And we sat in front of each of them, a large wrapped box. And they sat there in front of their box. <laughs> gracias, gracias, gracias! They had never had a present before. They didn't know there was anything in the box. It was just these people brought them a box, and it was really pretty. And they were grateful for the box. We brought them home a year later. We pulled up to our garage. Lonnie opens the garage, and the girls proceed to run into the garage with arms out like this. <gasps> mi casa, mi casa, mi casa, gracias, gracias. I love it, I love it and they didn't know there was a house on the other side of it. 
They thought the garage was all there was. And they were radically happy with it. Two weeks later, they were going to start school for the first time. So after we put them to bed, Lonnie went and bought a few school supplies for them. And the next morning, they woke up and they found a box of crayons. It was a little box, the box of 24 crayons. Nothing fancy. <gasps> Mi papi! Gracias, papi! We love it, we love it, we love it. They'd never had new crayons before. You see, when I was their age, I wanted the box of 128 with the sharpener in the back. The 24 was not good enough. But these girls were so grateful for a box of 24 crayons. Why was a box enough for them? Why was a garage enough to be happy over? Why was a simple box of 24 crayons enough to be happy over? Because hardships increase gratitude. Who's going through something hard? Let it increase your gratitude. It can make you bitter or it can make you better. Decide, I'm going to be birthday girl number three. I'm going to be grateful. I am going to be grateful. I want to read a little story to you. There's a story of a 92-year-old petite, well-poised, and proud man who moved into a nursing home today. His wife of 70 years recently passed away, making this move necessary. After waiting patiently nearly the entire morning in the lobby of the nursing home, he smiled sweetly when told his room was ready. The nurse walked alongside to steady his walker and provided a visual description of his tiny room, including the eyelet sheets that hung on the window. Oh, I love it. He stated with the enthusiasm of an eight-year-old who had just been presented with a puppy. But Mr. Jones, you haven't seen the room yet. Just wait. That doesn't have anything to do with it, he replied. Happiness is something that you decide ahead of time. Whether I like my room or not does not depend on how the furniture is arranged or what the curtains are on the window. I have arranged my mind, and I have already decided to love it. He was birthday girl number three. Happiness is something that you get to decide ahead of time. Whatever you're facing, maybe there's some change going on in your life, and it is not change that you asked for. Maybe it's a financial struggle. Maybe you or your spouse have lost a job and you don't know how ends are going to meet. How are you going to make the mortgage payment? Maybe it's with your kids. Man, you're just button heads constantly. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your in-laws. Maybe you're struggling with your health or your weight. I don't know what's going on in your life. But here's what I'm inviting you to do. I'm inviting you to trust. I'm inviting you not just to wake up happy in the morning, but this is so much more. This is about big, big life happiness. This is about deciding to say, thank you. I love it. Before you understand how it's all going to work out. Before it's all okay. Thank you. I love it. That is happiness. I'm going to close tonight's mentoring session with a few wishes for you. May you take responsibility for your happiness. May you get your panties out of a wad. Stop being so easily offended. May you be here fully. And when your kids or your grandkids or your husband says, look, look, be there all the way fully. May you be active, sleep when necessary, and live the rest of your life wide awake. And may you be grateful. Number three, that's where it's at. Ladies, thanks for joining us tonight. If you're watching online live, it has been a pleasure bringing this to you tonight live from Tulsa. We love y'all. Everybody say we love you. We love you. Oh, we love you. Good night.